It's an extremely important issue, Madam Speaker, and I seek your guidance. And I know you are sh sh for sure able to give guidance on this matter. I have got no doubt whatsoever. Madam Speaker, we are now in the sixth month of the financial year 2023-2024. As we speak, Madam Speaker, since this House appropriated funds to the NGCDF board for disbursement to respective CD NGCDF committees, not a single cent has hit the accounts, the bank accounts of the NGCDF committees. And GAF, definitely. Madam Speaker, I rise to seek your guidance in the sense that this House, without necessarily uh, anticipating debate, this House is poised to proceed on a long recess, very long recess, two months and above from this Thursday. Yet, Madam Speaker, we know that school children are opening schools in the first week of January. Much more important is that those who start their KCP exams are joining Form 1 in that same period. Madam Speaker, without bursary, which is provided for within the NGCDF framework, and GAF, more than three quarters of these children will not go back to school. That is an issue that should capture the attention of the whole nation. It's an issue that is so serious that should warrant this House taking a moment to ponder over it. In fact, it's an issue that would necessitate this House taking drastic measures. We have not been told yet what is the, what is the justification for the National Treasury not releasing the funds which is, which is earmarked for the NGCDF to the NGCDF board. We are not aware. And GAF, of course. When I, when I refer to NGCDF, just, just understand that I also mean GAF. Because the two go hand in hand. The two are like Siamese twins. Madam Speaker, therefore it behoves us as a house to take action. I want to ask, ask you to compel, first and foremost, the chairperson of the N NGCDF committee, my good friend, the Honorable Musa Serma, to compel my good friend, the leader of majority party, the Honorable Kimani Ichungwa, and to compel the national, the CS National Treasury to come forth and inform the House when are we, going, are we expecting the disbursements of NGCD, at least to take care of the bursary component before we proceed on recess? Yes. It's a matter that cannot be dealt with after the recess has started. It's an issue that must be dispensed with now and be at least before Thursday, Madam Speaker. In fact, if I am to hear, if I'm hearing my colleagues well, it's an issue you think must be dealt with now. No. Now. No. And therefore, it must, if it must be dealt with now, it would mean, therefore, Madam Speaker, that uh, the House might not transact in the, any other business. Yes. In my view, the, the House might not be in a position to transact any other business. I, I think so. The House would be in order to, to decline to transact any other business. In, in sympathy, in expressing its sympathy with the thousands of children of poor Kenyans out there, the children of hustlers, Madam Speaker, who are suffering out there, not knowing how they'll go back to school, when, when schools open in January. I want to plead with you, and, and this is a very serious speaker, and I will be asking my colleagues, once we have, and I want to also ask you, to allow our, our members to contribute to this issue, 
and after which then we can go and also chat out there so that we chat more freely we chat more freely yes in the corridors in the corridors thank you Madam speaker thank you um, i think i'll give a chance to majority leader and also to the ngcdf uh, committee chair who do i start with Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I will allow me to begin by thanking the leader of minority, the Honorable Pio Wandai, for raising. Honorable Speaker, there are two very loud consultations from the member for Belgut and the member for Keio North, and they are conversing in a language that is not known. I, I could I could only hear I could only hear Kongoi Kongoi Kongoi. Honorable <laughs> Speaker, now that I have the attention, Honorable Speaker, I say let me first thank the leader of minority for raising this issue, because as the leader of minority says, NGCDF is not a fund for members of parliament. NGCDF money is public money raised from Kenyan taxpayers for the benefit of Kenyan taxpayers. And I must repeat in the words of the leader of minority, in the interest especially of our hustler children who are awaiting for bursaries to, to, to be able to access what is a right to them and our constitution. Yes. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I cannot agree more with the leader of minority that NGCDF is a matter that ought to be treated with special attention. Yes. And Honorable Speaker, as much as we all understand we are living in difficult times, part of the elevation of that, the challenges that are there with the economy is to ensure that those who are not able to access school in January without, especially those children who just finished KCPE, they are able to access NGCDF bursaries, they are able to access GAF bursaries for them to be able to report to school. To Honorable Speaker, I know there are also challenges with other emoluments under Parliament. Because NGCDF members must also be cognizant that that does not fall under Parliament. It falls under the Ministry of Planning or the State Department of Planning. But there are also other challenges that relate to staff who are working in constituency offices who now fall under Parliament. Honorable Speaker, it would be extremely unfair for members of parliament to earn their salaries, they have means and ways to enjoy their Christmas break. But the staff who are working in their constituency offices basically have no Christmas. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, we have taken this matter up with the National Treasury to deal with the issue, the twin issues of money that should be disbursed to Parliament and money that should be disbursed to the State Department for Planning so that <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I was waiting for the member for Budalangi to finish with this very loud <laughs> advisory to the member for Madera. <laughs> now that this is done, I am sure he, he, I have his attention. That on NGCDF, we cannot afford to compromise, not for the benefit of members of parliament. And we must never make it look to the world like members of parliament have an interest in NGCDF. We only have the interest of the people who send us here to represent them not NGCDF. 
we actually would not care whether there is NGCDF or not if they made sure that Basari money was in the, with the people that we represent. We would not care. It is our work to resolve issues that are of concern to the people of Kenya and the people that we represent. Therefore, what the leader of minority is raising is on behalf of the 290 of us who are charged with the responsibility of resolving issues that are of concern to the people. And there is no issue now that is of greater concern to the people than them getting access to education for their children come January. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I have already engaged with the Cabinet Secretary in charge of the National Treasury and the State Department of Planning and the NGCDF uh, board, uh, the, the, the NGCDF uh, CEO. Uh, unfortunately, uh, here the uh, <laughs> Deputy Whip saying NGAF. I have not engaged with NGAF, but since it also falls under the same State Department, they have indicated that they are actually in the process of working on disbursement so that by the time we break, Now, honorable members, order, honorable members. Order, order, honorable members, the point is being made. See, yes, uh, honorable honorable speaker. members, proceed, majority leader. No, honorable speaker. Honorable if... members, the matter is uncontested. Everyone is in agreement. So just allow the majority leader to complete his statement. You know, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Honorable Speaker, if if uh, if members can allow me to finish, because as as the speaker has indicated. This matter is not contested by anybody, not even the leader of majority. That is why I took the liberty even before the matter was raised before the House, because you all forget that I represent the people of Kikuyu, first and foremost. I don't, I, and I have said it numerously. I don't sit here to represent, I don't represent government. I don't, neither do I represent the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury. I don't work for them. I work for the people of Kikuyu. And when it comes to when it comes to an issue when 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 it comes to an issue where there is conflict when an issue comes where there is conflict between a cabinet secretary a principal secretary a chair of a board or even the CDF CEO and the people of Kikuyu the people of Kikuyu take greater precedence than anyone else that is why I'm pleading with you you allow me to finish because what what was I saying in conclusion we I have already engaged with the cabinet secretary telling the cabinet secretary precisely that that there is now a situation where there's a conflict of interest between his work as a cabinet secretary and the principal secretary in charge of the national treasury, the director general in charge of accounting services, who is in charge of disbursing money, the principal secretary in charge of national planning, the CDF CEO, and the people of Kikuyu. And I indicated to the cabinet secretary that by Thursday we... Listen... As the leader of minority said, without anticipating debate, without doing what? Without anticipating debate. Honorable Speaker, again without anticipating debate, members will note that the House Business Committee had slotted in a morning sitting on Thursday. And I indicated to the Cabinet Secretary that this House cannot proceed to go on recess on Thursday without clarity as to the exact date, time, when the money not will be disbursed. 
will hit your NGCDF accounts at the constituency level. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, more and more important, Honorable Speaker, and I beg for members to listen, and it's easier to listen, Honorable Makilap, than shout from behind me. It is easier to lend me your ears and ask the Speaker, that is what happens in the August House. You don't shout from your seat, you request the Speaker to give you the mic, and you say what you want to say. More importantly, Honorable Speaker, the, the NGCDF CEO has indicated to me that they are, and the chair of the NGCDF committee can confirm we must act with equity so that no constituency is left behind. There are about 30, I think 36 constituencies whose proposals are yet to be received by the CDF committee and what we have requested, I was asked to also request the 36 members of parliament whose NGCDF committees, and let me repeat again for the interest of those who are fond of going to court, it is not the members of parliament of the 36 constituencies, it is the 36 members of parliament to cause in their oversight role their NGCDF committees to submit proposals to the board so that they are not left behind. Lastly, I have indicated to the National Treasury and NGCDF that the availability or non-availability of proposals must not hinder disbursement because what, what I listened to many members who came to my office from last week is what is bothering many of us is money especially for bursary. And therefore, we have asked the National Treasury and NGCDF, they know what is provided for in law, the maximum for bursary. With or without the proposal, we must cause them to disburse at least up to that 40% for bursary, so that by the time our children are uh, breaking from their Christmas break, we have processed the bursaries, or rather the NGCDF committees have received applications, processed bursaries, and they are ready to disburse those bursaries before schools open. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I, the Cabinet Secretary is on his way back to the country because he was speaking of, uh, on Monday, yesterday, while well, he was preparing to get back from COP28. And upon his arrival, I should be able to give a progress report on that particular position either tomorrow afternoon or latest Thursday morning before we even consider going for a break. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Just give one more member, then we go to the NGCDF uh, chair. Honorable David Oche, member for Ugenya. I've seen your pressed your point of order. No, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Without yes. shouting, you did press the intervention button. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, mine is just to agree with the Manuhi leader and Majority leader. I don't think Madam Speaker should get to this every year. That this parliament sits, passes a budget, goes ahead to pass a supplementary budget, where Parliament even gets his, his money is cut, and then now we are proceeding to recess. No one knows when money will be given. No one knows wh wh when we'll have this money disbursed. And Mr. Speaker, this is a third year running where we have to beg for CDF money for our children. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I think this house is losing its teeth. This house is losing its sheen. This house is not, because, it's not what we used to be. I've been here in my third time now, Madam Speaker. And we have never had to ask the majority leader of this house to talk about CDF, Madam Speaker. And I believe, Madam Speaker, it's because also us as members, we've become weak. We've allowed the, the, the executive to do whatever they want to us. We must, as a mem members of parliament, take our role seriously, especially. There's, there's no day I've seen any, any committee sending a minister away. If you don't use your teeth, they become blunt. And if I know they're now blunt, you cannot do anything with them. 
And so much as we have pressure on the majority leader, I think it's on us as a body of parliament. We've allowed the relative to go away with too much. They now think they can get away with anything against us. It must be said this afternoon that, Madam Speaker, if anything happens to our children because they don't have school fees, it will not be because of the executive, it will be because of us as members of parliament. It will be because of us failing to hold the executive to account when we need to. It is because of us hobnobbing with the ministers when they come here, kissing them, treating them like their kids. So, so I, I don't mourn for anybody. I mourn for us as a house that the Honorable and I, the Honorable Boy Chung are here. We must be able to, this, this thing we are doing this afternoon, you know, like bulls. We would have done this long time ago. No, today, you notice, know, you'd have done this even without it being brought to the floor. So our leadership, I believe, must take their role seriously as, as, as concerns the welfare of members and their constituents. And, and you know, some of these things, Madam Speaker, we know that if we don't do this, we'll keep going. This, after, this week, we're going for sports. We don't have enough budget for members to go for sports. Yet we did a budget the other day, we didn't put money for members to travel in there. We are now harassing the clerk to give us money, which is not there. Because you don't budget rightly. Madam Speaker, I wish to say, as I sit down, that as members of parliament, if we stop going to these offices and took our work seriously, we'll get these monies on time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The chairperson, uh, Speaker. NGCDF committee. Thank you, uh, Madam the Speaker. Jared, okay, no. You First cannot and help foremost. me do my job. First and foremost. As long as you continue heckling, you will not get an opportunity. Just press the intervention button. Proceed, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. First and foremost, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to concur with the sentiments of the majority leader in terms of how we have approached this issue. One, I am a member of Eldama Ravine constituency representing the people of Eldama Ravine before I became chair of the NGCDF. I want to thank the, majority, uh, the minority leader for bringing up this issue because all of us, as a united house, we are able to deliver. But a divided house will not deliver. So I want to ask uh, all of us to bear with us in the next uh, few, uh, today, today and tomorrow. The CS will have come and we expect the money. I have been, I have been, I, I was with the board and I can assure you. Yes, I know it is now. You know I can also say now. You know that. I can also say now. Because I have interest. It is for the people of my constituency who are more important than any other thing being in this house in terms of any hierarchy or any position which I hold. Uh, Madam Speaker, this issue must be addressed well and we should, we should not be begging anymore. I want to agree with also Honorable David Ocheng that it is, the, it is the failure also of us as a house. It is a failure of us as a house that we pass uh, as, uh, money to the various votes. But when you go to the ground, there is no money. Including, this is not the only development which is there. Apart from CDF, because it touches on every member. Other, other infrastructural activities which are supposed to deliver to Kenyans have not been addressed. So, I want to say, this is the step the first step that we come in unison and agree that all our children are more important than any other thing from now going forward. So, and I want to ask those 36 constituencies who have not also delivered their proposals to come up with their proposals and deliver it to the NGCDF board. We need, members. we need approximately 40% for of that amount of money to cover bursary alone. So, in other words, with, the, with what, we, what we call administration and others, 
we need at least a minimum of 50 percent because we passed the first quarter and we are now on the second quarter which we supposed to have gotten the money this month so i think you are right but let us have it as we have uh, all agreed that once the cs of finance arrives we should be able to get that money thank you madam speaker okay honorable members like i said from the beginning this is a matter that's cont uncontested all members are in agreement both the leader of majority and minority are also in agreement and those other members who have spoken including the speaker um, and even those members who have spoken it is they are all in agreement i think i like that the direction that was initially stated by the leader of majority which was that before we go on recess the the, the cabinet secretary honorable tj kajuang i have not completed the sentence honorable members Honorable members, Honorable Minority Leader, we were just trying to confirm when the Cabinet Secretary can be here. Consult with the Leader of Majority when the Cabinet Secretary can be here. Because members are walking out before they hear the answer. point of order minority leader uh, the honorable speaker i rise on a point of order Honorable members, you are denying yourself the opportunity of a solid answer. Honorable members, since everybody has spoken, we can move to the next order. Order number eight, procedural motion, approval of a Thursday morning sitting. You are attempting to respond to no, no, the... No, no. Would you like us to move to the... Since we've already called out the next order? No, let's move to the... You can, you, let's go, go to the... Okay, honorable members, be calm. We have already... I already called out the sec, next order. Because debate on that other issue has has since expired. Let us proceed to our next order. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. I want to beg your indulgence to withdraw the procedural motion because of the way it was worded. And Honorable Speaker, we shall uh, be consulting with the uh, House Wait. Business Committee members.
going to get their own money. He's just withdrawing that particular point of order. Then we'll come. I mean, uh, procedural motion. Therefore, Honourable Speaker, with your indulgence, I beg to withdraw the order listed as order number eight on the procedural motion to a later time, Honourable Speaker. No, the person who has, who's supposed to have a point of order is Honourable Wandai, not Honourable Mbui. Proceed, Honourable Wandai. Honourable Speaker, I rest on a point of order. That the House... The House has got no quorum, and therefore the House can't proceed. Yes. Honorable members, I direct that we ring the bell for 10 minutes. The bell is being rung. You can't have a point of order when the bell is being rung. Well, the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Gladys Bose, has directed a quorum bell be rung for 10 minutes. Uh, this follows uh, the lack of quorum in the House. This was after the leader of the minority party in the National Assembly, Honorable Opio Wandai rose on a point of order informing the speaker that the house lacks the requisite quorum for the business of the day to continue inside the house. But what transpired before that particular occurrence of lack of order in the house, remember that the house had already begun its business from 2.30 but uh, the issue on uh, the national government constituency development fund uh, that uh, the leader of the minority party honorable opio wandai rose to raise in the house indicating that uh, the members of the national assembly or rather the ngcdf committees have uh, not received the monies at uh, the constituency level and uh, the house is expected or rather set to proceed on a long recess uh, that uh, will put uh, the constituencies at a limbo uh, considering the fact that uh, in january the house will not be sitting and it is a time or a point that most of the schools reopen and most of the students who come from needy or vulnerable families require the funds commonly referred to as bursaries that usually cater for their school fees or financial ability in that capacity so it is from that point that the member for uh, that the, that the member the honorable member opio wandai informed the house that they need to take action as a house to ensure that the monies are disbursed before the house proceeds on recess that is slated to start from 8th of this month after the last sitting that will be on the thursday of 7th in the afternoon sitting and we also saw the leader of the majority party, Honorable Kimani Ashungwa, Ishungwa also, uh, indicating that the House is in agreement with regards to the monies that need to reach the constituencies before uh, the recess or before January in order that when the schools reopen then families who are not able to cater for their children's school fees can be able to benefit from such funds but in his defense or rather defending uh, the uh, 
cabinet secretary for treasury and national planning as well as uh, the ceo of ngcdf uh, the honorable leader of a majority indicated that he had earlier on engaged uh, the cs uh, treasury and national planning and the ceo for the national government constituency development fund and that uh, they confirmed that they will be working on that particular issue and they will be able to avail the money before the house uh, takes its break for the long recess that is on thursday uh, in this case, uh, there are 36 constituencies that are said to have not yet submitted their proposals to the NGCDF uh, board and uh, that they need to do so. However, the majority uh, leader or rather the majority the, of party majority leader has uh, indicated that uh, they noted to the NGCDF board that whether there has been availability or non-availability of uh, the proposals no committee or no constituency should uh, be left out in terms of uh, being given uh, the monies the member for the chair for the national government constituency development fund a committee honorable Musa Sirma who also took uh, the uh, stand to convince the members that uh, there are engagements that are underway between uh, the cabinet secretary for treasury and uh, the CEO of the NGCDF board uh, that uh, they have agreed to disburse the monies uh, before the recess begins and also indicating that uh, they need a total of about 40 percent of the monies uh, that uh, need to cover the bursary which is said to be the most uh, crucial bit in terms of the ngcdf monies uh, that assists a bigger chunk of the community especially those from the vulnerable uh, side of uh, the society or those from the lower part of uh, the pyramid uh, but uh, members f uh, beginning from uh, uh, all the comments that were being made by the honorable members uh, the members uh, in the chambers were not agreeing to the commitments that were being made by the honorable member kimani shungwa who is the leader of the majority party and the chair of the ngcdf who was saying that uh, they have uh, engaged uh, the treasury and national planning office as well as the uh, ceo as well as the board of the ngcdf and that they have shown some commitments to have the money dispersed uh, before the recess begins the members were not agreeing to those uh, our commitments uh, that uh, were being made by those leaders and yet they did not buy the idea that the money will be disbursed before or thursday or before the beginning of the recess and thereby most of uh, the members walked out of uh, the chambers the members walked out of uh, the chambers and basically that is what has happened the next order was uh, read uh, but uh, the leader of the minority party opio wandai rose on a point of order indicating that there is no quorum for the house to continue with the other business in the order paper for today's afternoon sitting uh, so basically that is what is happening but uh, allow me to take you to the other house of uh, the parliament that is uh, the senate for the proceedings as we await to see how the National Assembly will be taking up this matter. Of the House, I will exercise my discretion to allow a few members.